This next slide I want to show you, I've called the business environment ecology. Now this slide is very similar to the one we looked at earlier, uh, looking at the three tiers of the business, the transactional environment and the contextual environment. It's also similar to what we talk about when we, when we refer to the pestle. Some refer to it as the steep, uh, social, technological, economic, environmental, political. Um, you can see there inside the model, sort of in those blue squares or blue shapes, uh, political, economic, social, cultural, technological, ecological. That's typically, it's a little bit like the dashboard of a car. That's typically where strategic thinkers, executives are looking when they're scanning the environment of business. And so if you think of this model as the, the dashboard of a car, you're driving along, you're driving from London to Paris through the tunnel and you're, you're traveling along and you're looking at the signage along the road. Now, if you think about doing that, what would happen if you drove the car based on what you've just passed? So you kept looking back at, oh, we've just passed that milestone, we just passed that milestone. What would happen to the quality of your driving if you were looking at the past? You'd start making bad decisions because you're not looking at what's coming, right? So what often happens with strategic planning is the finance guys or the operational guys will do a forecast based on what happened in the past. So we had so many patients last year, in the case of your industry, we had so many patients last year, we had so much expenditure. That's the data we have, but it's all based on the past. When we forecast that data into the future, we get what Pierre Wack was calling the official future. The official future is we're going to have so many patients with so much growth with so many illnesses, et cetera, plus 5%, plus 10% or minus 5%. And we're making certain assumptions about what that might look like. What we're interested in doing with scenario planning is looking out the windshield and saying, what's happening in the environment of business What's happening politically, economically, socially, technologically in the environment? And then one might even take that a step further. In each of those categories, what is happening at the geopolitical level? In other words, what is happening internationally in the global environment? So how will, if we take the current trends, how will nationalism and populism uh, that we're seeing in the likes of the US, in Europe, other parts of the world, what happens when those trends come to our market and start to shape the politics in our environment? And we start to see, in the case of South Africa, what does a South Africa first policy look like? Uh, if you're dealing with migrants from the rest of Africa coming into your medical uh, facilities, what does a South Africa first policy look like? Well, it's a policy that says if you're a migrant, you go to the back of the queue. Now, that has implications, right? Similarly, from an economic point of view, what happens if we start talking about trade barriers to protect certain industries? Social culturally, we see the same thing. Technologically, these things have implications at the global level. Then at the heart of the model is this idea of costs and incentives. So every company has a set of costs that are, in, that are typical of the business model, of how the model operates cost of procurement, cost of salaries, et cetera. And it has certain incentives in terms of subsidies, in terms of incentives built into the market structure that, it, that really forms the financial heart of how the company operates. We then have underlying this sort of as the foundation of the business, the industrial relations, tax law and regulation, infrastructure, systems and services, and structures and processes. So if we take, for instance, industrial relations, what happens in an environment where government nationalizes this, this industry, it gives uh, mandated services as, as we've been discussing, and now the, the nurses and the doctors are unionized. And they say, we have to work under these conditions. Uh, we have to provide services to 60% more patients, but we're not getting 60% more pay and the, the businesses, in order to cope with this, the providers like the hospitals, streamline the services, simplify the services, and now the doctor is confronted with having to provide the same level of service with less resources, with less support, with less time. And so in a unionized environment, the doctors and the nurses decide, we're going to strike because we're not happy with the conditions. But we're not striking in a public hospital, we're now striking in a private hospital where we're providing these services to the public sector. And so all of a sudden, someone in your position has to deal with labor relations. You've got a, picket, a group of picketing nurses and doctors outside the front door of your hospital while you're trying to run under those conditions. And so the, you see how the political connects to the social, which connects to the 
labor relations and how that can make its way through the system. Yes. Interesting. Tax law and regulation, we can look at uh, how we, we've looked at that to some extent under, under NHI. Infrastructure, uh, obviously improvement or the degradation of infrastructure. One of them there around infrastructure, very interestingly, is, uh, of course, not just infrastructure, but the environmental conditions around things like air, air quality, and how that, in the case of the health system, will, will affect it throughout. Uh, now, what we've done with this model that we've developed here at Gibbs is to look at each of these domains and to unpack them in terms of the major factors that drive each of them. So if we look, for instance, at the economic domain, you'll see there it's got two lines uh, linking across to the macroeconomic environment and the other one linking across to key economic drivers. So for instance, and, and I'll use one of them as an example, in the economic domain, in the macroeconomic environment, interest rates go up and down. That drives the cost of, of, uh, of liquidity, of, of financial uh, credit, which then drives inflation in the economy. Tax revenue, we've spoken about earlier today, debt to GDP ratio, export import balance, the GDP growth, stock market performance, securities exchange complexity, property market performance, currency stability, financial market development. To the extent that those change, the economics change. And to the extent the economics changes, it then influences the rest of the system. Similarly, if we look at the key economic drivers, what is the population's median age? What is the employment rate, average annual income? What are the number of small to medium-sized enterprises and employers? What are the major industry sectors and employers? What's the labor market efficiency? Is there inward investment? What are the exchange controls? And what's the level of business sophistication? And so those factors are sort of the underlying drivers that shape the domain of economics, which then shapes the, the system overall. So when we do scenario planning, what we often do is we don't just look at what's happening to the economy at the sort of macro level. Is it growing? Isn't it growing? We might look inside that at what's happening to the labor market, what's happening to investment, depending on the business and depending on what we're trying to, to forecast through scenarios, how deep do we go into the economic system? Similarly, if you go across on the technological side, what are the levels of innovation, entrepreneurship, rates of adoption, institutional enablement, technological readiness, to the extent that those change, it will shape the outcomes of the environment. And so, of course, if you take this model and you use it as a lens, uh, like a telescope, to look at what's the future of the east coast of the US versus the west coast of the US, you see a very different picture because of the education levels, the technology, the technology adoption, the infrastructure. Uh, for instance, in some of the scenario work we've done, because of the major connectedness happening between the West Coast of the US and Asia, and the fact that companies like Microsoft, Apple, Tesla, uh, Amazon, these are companies coming out of Silicon Valley in the West Coast. They're not coming out of New York and Boston. We think that it's very likely in the next 20 years that the West Coast of the US becomes the economic heartland of the United States. Now, if you take that alongside growth in China, South Korea, Malaysia, Indonesia, when your children and my children grow up and you say to them, this is a map of the world, it's very likely that the map they're gonna look at is not one with the Greenwich Meridian in the middle with Africa at the center of the world. They probably will grow up in a world where the center of the map is the Pacific Ocean with the west coast of the US on the right hand side, Asia on the left hand side, and Mandarin and digital connectedness is the language of the global economy. Depending, of course, if Donald Trump gets his way and makes India America's preferred partner as he's trying to do rather than China as Obama was trying to do. So at the geopolitical, geostrategic level, those major shifts will shape what happens to a country, will shape what happens to a company, etc. We can one could apply the same rationale. Uh, to various geographies. Now, when we do scenario planning, we often develop or use a model such as this in order to do a scanning exercise of what are the major changes happening around us. This is one we've developed, uh, this business environment ecology is usually used to look at what's happening to the business environment. I'll give you a couple of other examples. 